So a long time ago in a land far away, we used to wait until we had release dates before we get excited about MMORPGs. Now it seems like we spend 8 to 10 to 12 years being excited, and we never know when the game is coming out. Well, for RuneScape players, people who like the point-and-click style of game, be excited. Because after 23 years, the original RuneScape creator is making a new anti-grind MMO that's opposed to the onslaught of microtransactions in modern MMOs. Now you know, microtransactions are a topic I talk about all the time. If you missed my video on them, straight above right there in the upper right hand corner, talk about do microtransactions belong in MMOs? And it seems like this particular developer has said no. So what do we got? We got Brighter Shores. An all-new adventure from award-winning MMORPG designer Andrew Gower. It is an enchanting point-and-click RPG with hundreds of hours of gameplay, set in a land of magic and mysteries, with a huge number of professions to try, and something new to find around every corner. This sounds great. But how is it any different than RuneScape? How is it any different than everything that's been promised? Because remember, a point-and-click game is already a certain niche. And now you're trying to say a niche game, and then we're going to do other things. Well, I love when a developer just tells you really how they feel. It is an MMORPG, but doesn't rely on other players to be fun. I have been alpha testing it on my own, and it's still very enjoyable. I think this is really important because we don't want to rely on others to have fun. It's an MMORPG, doesn't rely on others. The game is already attracting, attracting RuneScape 4-like comments after its first trailer debuted. RuneScape players will indeed get a dose of the familiar, so these comments aren't exactly out of place. It's a top-down, grid-based fantasy MMO with plenty of skills to learn. Fishing, blacksmithing, causing magic, and alchemy, and even assembling dinosaurs. Now I'm going to say this right here. The fact that we can assemble dinosaurs, I'm going to play. That's it. I'm going to play. It's like RuneScape. Brighter Shores won't just be about fighting. Players will be able to take up a huge amount of professions, including fisher, forger, chef, word cutter, miner, alchemist, stonemason, merchant, blacksmith, and many more. Now, a lot of people want to know, that's great. How's it going to be monetized? It's actually going to be free to play with a restrictive premium pass. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear when they take the free to play option that they're limited from player to player trading. Personally, in a game like this, in a game like RuneScape, in pretty much any MMORPG now, trading has to be restricted to sub-based only, otherwise you just open up your game to a never-ending supply of bots, uh, automated scripters, people who just want to take the fun out of everything, and then that leads to a lot of RMT. So the monetization strategy, Brighter Shores is set to release on PC or Mac via Steam later this year. Although the MMO will be free to play, Fen Research is promising an all-inclusive in, all premium pass that will cater to players who are after extra quests, adventures, and stories, as well as added features like player trading and spare, special character names. Again, sort of like the RuneScape membership. Regular updates are expected beyond the game's launch. And if you want a developer to keep updating their game after launch, especially in a free-to-play title, the developer has to make money somewhere. Now, some people are talking about corporate greed, and yes, we have examples of corporate greed. Some people are talking about well, there should just be a box price. Well, servers cost money. The one piece I did want to talk about the monetization that didn't make it into the first quote, Rider Shores will be free to play when it releases, a premium pass that adds additional quests, professions, and features, such as player-to-player -player trading. Its current release window is quarter three, so sometime between July and September. Now, I would say as long as that gets a little bit more enunciated that some of the professions are locked behind the, the premium pass, then I think they're doing it right. One of the websites did say the monetization is clearly spelt out on the Steam page. I must be blind because I couldn't find it. I had to dig through a lot of articles to find it, but I wanted to make sure that we hit both the monetization quotes because some people are going to say, nope, locking professions behind the sub is too much for me. And to those people, I would say, I'm kind of on a kick where I say gamers are pigs. We want to, you know, we want to eat it. We want our cake. We want to eat it too. We want somebody else to pay for it. And we want somebody else to have to absorb the calories for it. It's a free to play game. If it distracts you enough as a free to play game, you got your money's worth. 
because you gave them zero. If they put some stuff behind a locked premium subscription, that's fine too. Developer, he got to eat. Developer, he has to pay his staff. If you want a game to keep developing, they need money. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just a stupid guy in a top hat. What do you think? Do you think locking some professions behind the premium sub is okay? As long as they clearly tell everyone some professions are locked up? Will you not play another free-to-play game again because you hate free-to-play because of what it brings with a lot of gold sellers, gold buyers, bots, scripters? Or is a click-to-play game just really not your style, so it doesn't matter what Brighter Shore does, you're simply not going to play? Let me know your opinions in the comments below, and I will see you next time.